Hi everyone and good morning from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Today we're here at one of the most visited museums in the entire country, the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. I have a hard time saying the word Smithsonian. There we go, I got it this time. You did. And I'm excited to check this out. I haven't been here in a very long time and uh, it, it should be fantastic. This video is just going to show you everything the free museum does have to offer. We have made it inside the museum and uh, hanging right here where you go in is the WR3 which is the first ever airplane owned by a African-American gentleman with a racing pilot's license. Currently in one of the main galleries at the museum, home to all sorts of different airplanes. You got the Boeing 747, the Ford 5 AT Tri-Motor, uh, Northrop 4A Alpha, the Douglas DC-3, and a couple more. Uh, they're presented so well. You do get to step into the, uh, the 747 fleet with the staircase and take a look into the cockpit. Seems like a pretty good size airplane bathroom. And, uh, oh man, yeah, you can tell the cockpit definitely feels very old. <coughs> also in the main gallery area are a couple of satellites. This exhibit is all about the moon. Very early space stuff. This was the Mercury primate capsule. So before they sent humans to space, they sent a chimpanzee in this thing here. Pretty cool piece of history here. This is the Mercury capsule Freedom 7, in which Alan Shepard became the first American to get shot into space. Man, look at that. I have an exhibit with some space toys from the 50s, including the Moonliner. The Moonliner used to be in, um, in Tomorrowland and Disneyland over in California. Right underneath the giant F1 engine is one of the, uh, the most famous pieces in the collection here at the Smithsonian. And that is Neil Armstrong's space suit from when he walked on the moon going hand in hand with the last one. They have the command module from Apollo 11. Really cool, some super duper historical stuff here. Here's the F1 engine parts from Apollo 11, but all split up into its different pieces. The moon section does have a second level where you can get some more views of some of the various artifacts. There's also some early versions of what the spacesuit looked like. There's also an exhibit showing off delicious, delicious space food. That is tuna salad. Yeah. Chicken stew. You know, the butterscotch pudding looks, looks okay. Cocoa, looks like cocoa. Grapefruit drink does not look like grapefruit drink at all. No, I would have no idea that's grapefruit This is a uh, coffee with sugar and cream. Of course, they would have moon rocks. And then this is really neat. They've got one of the lunar rovers. This one was from uh, Apollo 15, 16, and 17. This exhibit makes tons of sense for the Air and Space Museum. This is the Wright Brothers and the Invention of the Aerial Age. Without a doubt, one of the coolest things here at the Smithsonian. This is the Wright Brothers plane, the 1903 Wright Flyer, the first ever airplane. And uh, man, it's really cool seeing the, this kind of history. Um, the fabric you might think is a little bit newer. The museum did replace that in the 80s, but this is the actual plane that they flew in uh, Kitty Hawk. So neat. As part of the exhibit, they do have some of the original fabric as well from the Wright Flyer. The next exhibit is Nation of Speed. We got a 1959 Chevrolet Corvette, advertises America's first sports car. It's also an exhibit about toys, everything from the Pinewood Derby to Barbie's Corvette, Hot Wheels. 
And then, of course, Star Trek toys and Star Wars toys. This is Evil Knievel's motorcycle. And obviously, it's a big theme park fan. This was the one he used at King's Island to jump over 14 Greyhound buses. That is cool. This is the car that Mario Andretti won the 1969 Indianapolis 500 in. Uh, some members of the Inloop staff are big fans of F1 racing, IndyCar racing, NASCAR racing. I am not that staff member. Got Dale Earnhardt's racing helmet. I read this exhibit because, well, there's a taxidermy lion here. Now, the lion was apparently the pet of Mr. Roscoe Turner, which brings me to my next point. Don't keep lions as pets. No. <laughs> Look at this motorcycle that went 136 miles an hour in 1907. You got Richard Petty's NASCAR and some of the cars from Cars. More Currently looking at the Sonic Wind Number no. One, a rocket sled that back in the 50s went 632 miles an hour. Whoa! For me, one of the most interesting pieces in this museum is right in front of us. This is, of course, the Starship Enterprise from Star Trek, and this was the original model used in the famous uh, opening credits of Star Trek. Hanging from the rafters is a, a famous airplane. But not a real one. This is, of course, the X-Wing from Star Wars. This was a screen-used uh, X-Wing from the Rise of Skywalker film. Yeah, Poe used it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, so much larger than the X-Wing that's at Galaxy's Edge. And you can see the R2 unit on the back. This is very cool. Up next is early flight. With all sorts of uh, wild ideas of what flight would look like. You know, I'm really bummed that uh, this style of uh, aircraft never took off. No. Right? The 1820s had uh, some ideas. Yeah. Another fun idea for a, a Zeppelin powered by a small motor. A model here for the concept that was called the Convertiplane. There's another Wright Brothers plane. This one is the Wright Military Flyer the world's first military airplane. A lot of this exhibit is all different models of small airplanes throughout the years, which are uh, pretty cool to uh, look at all the different types. The next exhibit is We All Fly. We got lots of stuff hanging from the ceiling. A basket from a hot air balloon. Uh, one of these things. <laughs> one of these things. <laughs> Somebody flew past us on one of those in a cruise ship. Yeah, they or did. leaving Miami. Yeah. In this chair here, well, that was just a guy strapped it to a whole bunch of balloons and he flew around on it. Up. It's, yeah. <laughs> it was a house and we up. Man, you have a uh, an amphibious plane of some type and uh, more modern aircraft. A little bit more information about the Airphibia. This was the first ever FAA or uh, CAA approved rotable aircraft. It could drive from the airport to town as a car by disengaging its wings, tail, and propeller. Interesting. Interesting thought. Probably didn't catch on. There's a display talking about different drones including the prototype Amazon Prime Delivery Drone from 2016. On the lower level of the Grand Atrium area is America by Air. Pretty neat exhibit here. This is a simulated cockpit of an Airbus A380 coming in for a landing at nearby Ronald Reagan Washington International Airport. With this one being in the atrium, there's also a lot of larger artifacts. It's a very interesting collection of uh, flight crew uniforms from the 60s and 70s. There's people that had to wear that hat. 
That would not be a fun time. There's a Rolls-Royce dart engine, and then this is really neat. You spin the interactive here, and it shows off the difference between a jet engine and a piston engine. Kind of mesmerizing to watch. There is a planetarium here at the museum. It is $9 if you want to go see one of the shows. Now time to explore the planet. This exhibit does include uh, information all about the various planets and the solar system. And a giant satellite. And a giant satellite. There's also this really neat movie presentation. Behind the glass there are some different rovers. Another cool pop culture prop here. Those are Mr. Spock's ears. I never thought I would see those. One World Connected is next, and it's all about how aviation and spaceflight connect the world. As you might guess with this one, lots of stuff about satellites. Here you got a uh, Japanese satellite TV dish from the 1980s. This is the World Space Satellite Radio from the 2000s. It's pretty neat. Uh, the big globe in the middle can do a whole bunch of stuff. Right now it is tracking animal movements. So an albatross or a Galapagos fur seal. It's pretty fun. And they also do like where people live, all sorts of fun stuff. We are visiting the Air and Space Museum here in June of 2023. And just to take note, a lot of it is closed for renovation. A good probably half, if not more than half. But also it doesn't cost anything to get into. A look at some of the exhibits coming soon. And uh, yeah, some of these look pretty cool. And that'll do it for our time here at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Really cool. I, I thought it was great. It was. Such a cool collection of artifacts. It's presented very, very well. Uh, some important information. You do need a free timed reservation. You just got to go on their website to make them. And they do sell out. So if you're planning on coming to visit, definitely do so and look online. Uh, we mentioned how they were doing a big renovation. It's a renovation that started back in 2018. Won't be finished until 2025. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I definitely want to come back in a couple years and see like when the it's rest, all done. Yeah, because this looks really nice. Yeah, um, just seeing this half of the museum alone did take us about 90 minutes. And if you read everything, well, it could take you three days probably. Yeah. But I had a great time. I could obviously see why this is so well attended and so well loved. If you have any questions about the museum, let me know in the comments section below. And thank you for watching.